Hello YouTube, it's William here with Gopro Noppers Trains and today I have a review of the Bachman 484 Overland Limited. This one I picked up, well this one has a bit of a story to it, so essentially I bought one used on eBay, had it for about a week, and then I discovered the drive gear on it was cracked, so I contacted Bachman, sent it into their service department, and they replaced it free of charge. So this brand new unit here actually cost a total of sixty dollars. Now for rivet counters this model will not hold much appeal because I don't believe there is any prototype that resembles this engine at all. This is more of a fantasy engine. It is actually a repaint of their 484 Niagara which I will show you in just a moment. It also does not have the elephant ears on either side of the boiler. So before I go into uh, more detail on the engine I'd like to talk about the drive. This thing has a very smooth drive that is definitely characteristic of Bachmann's newer stuff. Now my old 484 Overland Limited had a can motor drive but it had plastic gears and just did not run well at all. Uh, that even with the cracked gear, you could tell it was very noisy, was not very smooth and all of that. But this new one has one uh, can motor, I believe it does have a flywheel, and this new drive is very very smooth and very silent. Last thing I want to talk about is the packaging for the engine. When you buy it, it'll come in this blue Bachman box. And this is actually a standard line model, which I'm very impressed by because generally you don't see this kind of quality from a standard line of trains that includes the 484 Niagara. <coughs> Excuse me. The only difference is that this one is DCC ready and not DCC equipped. So now we've gone through all of that. Let's go ahead. I will put the camera on the track and we'll take a look at it and all of its details. So here we are, we're at the front of the locomotive. Now I understand the camera's not perfectly aligned, but what are you going to do about it? So anyways, let's go right ahead. Now, like I've said, this is a repaint of the 484 Niagara, and you will see it when I compare the two side by side. Starting at the pilot, we've got a nice pilot with the vertical bars. We also have a Easy Mate knuckle coupler, which is KD compatible. Um, I actually removed the one on my Niagara because I had problems with the um, brake hose hitting switch points years ago. We've got on the front, unfortunately there's no safety tread, but we do have a coupler cut bar up here that also looks really good and moves. Not sure if it's painted or chemically blackened. I'm going to go with painted because that's just the way it looks. Now we've got stairs on either side of the pilot along with this interesting detailing here beneath the smoke box door. Now there is room behind it and there's some more cast in detail in the back here that you can't see at the moment. However it still looks very good. There's plenty of cast in detail on the front, some steps. On the smoke box door all around the outside we've got some very nice rivet detailing. The dual beam headlight which is of course characteristic of the Niagara. That's one thing I really like about Bachman's model. This one has a warm white LED, not a yellow LED like the Niagara does. I don't know if the Niagara has the white LED on the new model as well. My old model Niagara has the yellow LED. Um, you can't really see it from this angle, but there are yellow stripes painted on either side of the pilot, and that continues down the other side. We've also got some nice cast-in detailing around the smoke box door. We have some more rivets and clamps around this small section here and where there would be a number plate on the Niagara unit. So that's about it in terms of detail from the front. So let's go ahead and have a look at each side. So here we are. We are taking a look at the side of the unit now. And um, I've removed the tender so you can see everything. And we'll also take a look at the back head in just a minute. But on the side is a lot of detail. Starting from the front, we've got this grab iron that runs all the way to the back. And this is definitely painted. Along with all of the stanchions, those will be painted black as well. We have some very nice painting done on the front of the boiler. The separation is really well done. It's very crisp and no bleeding whatsoever. 
We can also see that yellow stripe that continues up from the pilot and down the side of the engine. Down here, in, uh, there's, it's a little lacking in light, but you can see the detailed cylinder and all of the really nice running gear which also looks great while the unit is in motion. Excuse me. We've got plenty of cast in rivet detailing on the sides along with these um, I guess you could say bands almost around the boiler. Got our firebox down here with lots of great cast in rivet detailing and handles and tubes and whatnot. We've also got Unfortunately, no stamped safety tread on the side, but that's not really too much of an issue for me. On the top, we've got our whistle, which is located right here next to the smokestack. I believe this is a superheater, although I'm not sure. Some nice tubing around there. Some more cast in detail. <coughs> Excuse me again. As we move back, we can get to these steam and sand domes, which are right here. Now, I, I believe this is the st sand dome. Not totally sure. But I thought it was um, rather small for this model. I'm not sure whether or not it's removable. I have no plans to try. Please ignore that. Um, I believe this is the dynamo right here. And we have an air horn towards the back. Also on around the cab we've got the really nice and crisp 807 number. Some cab windows. No inserts. Rivet detailing along the top. And a cast in roof vent on the top which does not open. So now we're having a look at the other side of the engine. I believe this is the fireman's side. Um, the whistle comes out in sharp relief over here. Um, one thing I noticed is that there is no bell on the engine, which um, it's not really too much of an issue for me, although those who are modeling prototypically definitely will not like that. But we can see the same amount of detail with the exception of the throttle linkage, which I forgot to show last time. It's essentially a tube that runs down the whole side of the engine, just about to the front of the boiler. But it's very small and kind of hard to see anyways. I also forgot to show these small holes, which I believe may be pop-off valves, I'm not sure. And these little squares cut into the side. No builder's plates, but it still looks really nice. We've got the same level of detailing on the running gear down here and the firebox. And we've got some nice cast in detail over here, which includes a ladder and some grab irons for the cab. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the back head of the engine and check out the details there. So here we are, now we're at the back of the engine. We are having a look at the back head and inside. So you can see that we've got the drawbar back here which has two slots in it for uh, different radiuses if you can com accommodate that or radii. We can also see the grab irons back here which are separately applied and painted black. We've got two small windows in the back of the cab and I don't know if you can see it but the back head is nicely detailed with a smoke box door lots of nice cast in details knobs and dials um, unfortunately none of it is painted however the small size of the windows on this model should not be an issue we don't have any seats for the fireman and engineer so you'd have to add those as standing fingers er, figures <laughs> excuse me almost but other than that, no complaints back here. It is very well done and very well detailed. So here we are at what is some people's uh, favorite feature of the engine, and that is the awesome Vanderbilt tender pulled behind the unit. Now, while we're here, we can also see the two connections that run to the locomotive for the NMRA-ready um, DCC. I believe that's an 8-pin decoder plug and a 2-pin plug for the directional backup light. I'm not going to spend as much time on the tender, I'm just going to do a very quick overview of everything and all the details on it. Um, no, I'm not doing it full justice, you'd have to pick one up yourself, but still, this is a great tender and has a lot of awesome detail. So we can see some separately applied ladders on the front and back of the tender. We've got plenty of rivet detailing in the sides, even though it is mostly cast in, and actually rather hard to see at most times because of the paint scheme on here. Now this is an oil burning tender, as you can see by the top there's no coal. We have a really nice looking cast in wooden deck with four hatches on it. The hatches are also cast in and they do not open. We've got this separately applied grab iron running the length of the tender 
on both sides and we've got this really neat curved ladder that follows the curved rear of the tender which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the tender off the tracks to show you everything on it. Got some really nice cast in detail on the front. Here we go, we'll go around to the other side. You can kind of see the rivet detailing on there. Here's the back, which is one of my favorite parts of this tender. Again, easy mate knuckle coupler. Um, we have a bright white LED backup light and another separately applied detail here. Not sure what that actually is though. If we flip it over to the bottom, we can see that we have a spot for a speaker for sound. We have two pickup wipers touching the outer two wheels on each truck. And these do roll fairly well even though that it has the pickups on there. If you want to do a conversion to KD, it should be fairly easy because this coupler box is um, the proper size for a KD coupler. I'm not going to be putting KDs on mine because I just don't have the money. But really all you have to do is crack the shell open and you can go ahead and plug in your decoder. So I'll go ahead, reattach this to the engine, and now we'll bring out my New York Central Niagara and compare the two side by side. So here we are, we are up here and we've got both engines on the track. So I'm just going to slide this back a bit and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod now. I'll freehand this and I'll show you the similarities between the two models. Now just looking at it you can see that the steam and sand domes are essentially the same. However they look much more in place on the Niagara. We have essentially the same body casting. Uh, it is the same body casting, but as you notice, these two are actually the same shade right here. It just looks like this one is darker because it's surrounded by uh, black there. But <clears throat> if we come around to the front, we can see that the detailing is essentially the same. It's just that there are decals on here and there are number boards on the side. And of course, the iconic smoke deflectors are not present on this unit. Pilots are the same. Smoke box doors and fronts are the same top of the body casting is the same, detailing on the side is the same. Tenders are really where the locomotives differ. The Niagara has a much more prototypical centipede tender, whereas the Overland Limited has a six axle uh, Vanderbilt tender that is much shorter and oil burning. But other than that, there really aren't many differences to the locomotive other than the paint scheme, the missing elephant ears, and the tenders. So before we close this review and go to the running shots, I just want to give my closing thoughts on the engine and its features. I think that um, while this isn't the most prototypical model, I think it's a very fun engine. I really enjoy mine. I love how it runs. I think it looks really cool, especially pulling some Union Pacific passenger cars. That said, it is not at all prototypical, so serious modelers will probably want to stay away from this. Um, it is sold in a train set, which is better for younger children, uh, as it comes with a whole bunch of freight cars and this awesome engine, which is more than capable of handling a heavy freight, especially of free-rolling cars. But, <clears throat> I think this engine is very, very interesting. It definitely stands out from the crowd. I think that if you like the Union Pacific and you aren't super concerned about being prototypical, I'd say pick one of these up. It's a very fun engine. I really enjoy mine. And if you've got 22 inch radius curves on your layout like I do, this thing will handle them no problem. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and run it a bit. I'm going to zoom out and I will show you how this thing runs. So I'm doing the running shots very differently this time. That's because I want to give you guys a better perspective of the locomotive while it is in operation. And that of course comes with better sound detection so that you can hear the engine better as it runs by. Um, I do apologize for the huge mess all over my table. It's just that I've got a lot of projects that I'm working on right now. Especially my switch yard over here. I need a bunch of components to get that done. But that aside, let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up now. I'm going to get a really nice slow speed crawl out of it. This has a very smooth drive and it runs slow very well. There we go. 
as you can see there is hardly any noise whatsoever. Really the only noise you can hear when you run this thing is the wheels on the track, the only exception being higher speeds. So I'm going to back it up again and the rearward facing directional light is on. Now I could probably get better slow speed out of this if I had a DCC decoder installed. Um, however, I don't. I'm running this on straight DC, so it's all manual. A little bit of a lurch as we get really low towards the bottom end of the spectrum, but still, awesome performance on the slow speed end. But this thing isn't really meant to be a switcher. Uh, this is definitely a mainline high speed locomotive, so let's get some medium speed out of it. Okay, we'll back it up again. It's time to give it a bit more. Here we go. And as you can hear, very, very silent drive. You can hardly hear it. So this is full speed right here. I'll run it by at full speed one more time. And uh, that's actually not too fast to be prototypical. Um, I think it looks much better at around this speed or below. However, um, it'll definitely reach prototypical passenger speeds with no problem. And this thing has great speed control. Absolutely no issues whatsoever with that. So anyways, um, that's how the engine runs. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw some passenger cars behind it and I will show you the running action shots. So anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Mm, excuse me. Thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.